This week on the Computer Chronicles, Internet Plugins. We'll meet author John Angel for an introductory tour to what you can do with the plugin. Then we'll show you Shockwave, the most popular plugin on the net. If you want audio, this is what you'll need the new Real Audio plugin from Real Networks. We'll show you what the Apple QuickTime VR plugin can do on this NASA website, plus a visit to the virtual office thanks to Farallon's Netopia plugin. Finally, a guided tour of Palace Space, where you use plugins to create your own cyber personality. Also, my pick of the week, a simple way to turn your PC into an electronic TV guide. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Z Auction the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll-free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how-tos for a Windows world. Because the world runs on Windows. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, if you really want to get the most out of the Internet and the web, you usually need more than just a browser. You need plugins. You may want to hear audio, watch video, see an animation, decode an enclosure, create an avatar. All these goodies require software to enable this functionality in your computer. Here to help us sort through all this plugin business is John Angel, author of this book on Netscape plugins and uh, otherwise plugin guru here. Let me ask you. The, whole, the title of your book suggests one problem right away, and what you have to do with plugins depends on what browser you use, right? Explore one set of problems, Netscape another set of problems. Absolutely, it, and in fact, it's exceptionally confusing right now because Netscape has its plugin architecture. Microsoft with Internet Explorer uses ActiveX controls, which basically do the same sort of job. But get this, if you have a Mac, and you run Microsoft Internet Explorer, it uses plugins. <laughs> so, Very uh, confusing. <laughs> it's a jungle out there, as yes. you said. Yes. Right, so first of all, you've got to know what browser world you're in to decide what in the world you're going to do with plugins. Then mm -hmm. the problem is, say you want to do video, you want to watch video. There's not just one standard out there. We have an example. You have Alas. your website up here, right? <laughs> Okay, yes, now if we we'll, wanted to watch some video on your website, you've got what, uh, C-SPAN up here or something? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes up here. We <laughs> have an emulation of a TV set here, nice uh -huh. vintage model, and plugged into its channel selectors uh, are various live feeds. All right, so let's pick a feed. So let's, uh, let's try, I believe we're going to have C-SPAN here, if I had left it on the correct channel. All right, now on your website, what plugin are you using to watch this streaming video? I, I am using the I Real Networks ago, product, and uh, in Where fact, I'm currently working on a book on their product. Uh, All right, so we're is. able to watch the audio and video. Right. Now, the problem is, let's switch over to my website, the Computer Chronicles okay. website. Yes, we'll, we'll do this. And, uh, and I want to make the point that even though we have now downloaded the plugin that enables me to watch audio and video on your website, if I get to the Computer Chronicles website, that's not good mm -hmm. enough anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're using a different system. Exactly. You can in, uh, encounter a variety of error messages. We'll try and play this right. uh, and, and see what happens here. Uh, All right, the difference is we're using what's called Vivo Active, which is another correct. video plugin. And now the question is, can one computer handle both of these at the same time? Yes, it can, provided that you have the hard disk space. Okay, well, we've got some sort of we error We have a complaint there. there. I think we have the plug-in, but we probably are... I want you to click away and just see what happens here. We probably are encountering a war over control for the... There you are. There's a posted stamp size, Stuart. Sort of working. But again, these things battle each other, right? Now, if mm -hmm. I were to go to the CNN website... It still wouldn't work because they use yet a third standard. Don't yet they? a third, yes, uh, VXtreme right. Web Theater plugin. So, uh, what right do you now do? it's you know <laughs> it's like the the early days of radio or something where you had to have a different set. Yeah. On the other hand, I must say that plugins are exciting. It, it was exciting doing the book in the sense that, that right now standards are being settled. Mm -hmm. It's the sort of last chance for some of the small software companies. Uh, before the final yeah. standards are set. All right, last question. Java is yet another story, isn't it? That's right. 
Java has the appeal that you relax. You don't really you let need the computer to plug drive. In. You go to the site, and the applets download, and they do whatever for you. But they grab your machine, and they may be slow, et cetera. Et cetera. Well, the trouble is that they're written by and for people who yeah. have T1 connections right. and, and uh, plugins. ActiveX controls, at least once you've downloaded them, mm -hmm. they're, they're there. So. so it's a jungle out there, and we'll just have to wait. It's not going to be easy, right? <laughs> no. Uh, all right, thank no, you, John. No, it's pretty interesting. All right, well, you really do miss a lot on the web if you don't have the right plugins. One example is NASA's website on the Mars Explorer mission. If you have the right plugin, you can almost feel like you're on Mars at this website. At the NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, Jeff Bruce and Rodrigo de Toledo were faced with a challenge. How to create the excitement of a trip across the Martian surface seen through the window of a website. They chose Apple's QuickTime VR to produce a 3D panorama that can be viewed with a plug-in. We took uh, real USGS topographic data. Uh, we took that and we brought that into a 3D program. Uh, we kind of massaged it into a terrain and we used scientific input from the scientific experts here at Ames uh, to give us an understanding of what the Martian surface and the atmosphere would look like. And, uh, and then we dropped a camera in the middle of this 3D model which created the panorama that, which we then brought into a program that extracted a QTBR panorama. The virtual window on Mars began with some hazy looking data received from earlier missions to the Red Planet. The next step was to create a wireframe model of the data and to add color and texture. Visitors to the site can retrieve the panoramic window by choosing a spot on an aerial map of the planet. They navigate through the Martian plains and valleys with a mouse. Clicking on specially marked points brings up items for closer inspection. The plugin itself just simply supports a QuickTime movie. It's actually a QuickTime VR support, but uh, the, Qu the QTVR itself is simply a um, an interactive movie developed by Apple uh, that uses QuickTime technology. By downloading the QTVR plugin, it allows the support of these interactive movies. One advantage of the QTVR plugin is its compact size. Each movie needs only about 32 kilobytes of memory. On the other hand, site visitors need to find and download the plugin first. There's no question that uh, plugins are somewhat of a headache. Uh, to have to go access them, uh, find the right plug-in for your system, download it. However, uh, if, if, this, if the plug-in itself supports something that uh, is worth seeing, I think that most users will uh, wait and take the time to do that. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. Well, the most popular plugin on the internet is Shockwave from Macromedia. Over 20 million copies of Shockwave have already been downloaded from the Macromedia website. And I guess, Kevin, that's because a lot of kids are playing games that are Shockwave driven, right? They are. All right, can we take a look at some examples of what Shockwave brings us? What, what do I get out of having Shock, Shockwave on my computer? Sure. This game here is one done by CBS Sportsline. It's a basketball game where you play one-on-one uh, -on -one with this other opponent. You kind of move around, move your guy around, and you just fade back in. Shoot, I missed that one. <laughs> but um, that gives you an idea. Let's try one more. And I missed, missed again. Missed again. All right, what is, let's explain. What is Shockwave bringing to the picture here? Why can't I do this without Shockwave? Um, no other tool will allow you to do this. Shockwave allows you to display animations, uh, play graphics, sound. Uh, and it allows you to have a lot of interactivity that you just can't get in HTML. Right, so there's information moving up and back between me, the user, and what's coming off that exactly. server. Exactly. Show us now. You've got another game. I think there's Mudball or something. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, same idea? Same idea. Uh, the Mudball game uh, allows you to uh, play a game that works for little kids. Let's mm -hmm. just launch that one here. It's done by a company called Broderbun. They do a lot of kids software. Right. And same principle, I can use animations, I can use interactivity, so it really turns a, a website into something much more alive. Ex exactly. You can change colors in this case, change shape, and you can even shoot mud against a wall, which is pretty fun for any Okay. 
All right, now let's talk about how, suppose I have a website right. and I want to create some of these things so that people with Shockwave can watch them. What tools do I use to do that? You can use Director, which you've seen for both right. of these games, or you can use uh, Macromedia Flash, which right, makes... Now, what is Flash? Flash allows you to do simple interfaces and simple interactivity just for the web. So this is like a baby director for just doing simple animations? Kind of like a baby director, but it works on vector uh, animations instead of bitmaps okay. in high interactivity. It allows you to do things like moving uh, bitmaps, I mean vectors across the mm -hmm. screen, fading in, fading out, simple rollovers, and even like click down and roll off, things like right. that. All right, so let's go to director next. That's sort of the heavy duty tool here for creating these things. And show us what that environment looks like. Sure. Director looks something like this, and you can create simple animations in Director um, really easily by just grabbing any object, picking it up, placing it on the screen. I actually have one animation there. Mm -hmm. And you can create an animation by just dragging out like so. You can also choose not to have that white background by just moving it like that. Mm -hmm. And you can create any animation that way and some simple interactivity, and then just go up to the File menu and pull down to Save as a Shockwave uh -huh. Movie, and you're done. Now, it looks a lot like creating a Java applet. What's the difference between Shockwave and Java? The difference between Shockwave and Java is that Shockwave requires a plugin. And as you said, a lot of people have the Shockwave plugin, right. but some people don't. So we have a new tool called Aftershock. And Aftershock allows you to deliver something to your users that they will always see, whether they have the Macromedia plugin or not. So you're saying if I create an animation in Aftershock, even if the user doesn't have the Shockwave plugin downloaded, they can see something, but it might not be the same quality? Exactly. Um, Aftershock is just a post-production tool from Macromedia for Flash is the one I'm going to show you here. Mm -hmm. Where you just go up to the file menu and you say add a Flash movie. In this case, I'm going to add the Macromedia home page. Um, it tells it asks you for the layout, whether you want it to be high quality or not. Mm -hmm. It also asks you for alternate images. So if they don't have the Shockwave plugin or the Flash plugin in this case, and they want to see an, you want to show them an image, you can, uh -huh. or you can play it back in Java as well if they're okay. on a Java-enabled browser. All right, so the creativity tools I need are either Director or a Flash or an Aftershock if I'm on the creation end. Yep. If I'm a user, uh, and I pay for those things, I mean, I buy that software from yes, you. Yes. On the user end, for free, I can download the Shockwave player. Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. Sure. All right, well, one of the first plugins you probably downloaded was Real Audio 1.0 because you wanted to be able to listen to music or talk on a website. Well, Real Audio has come a long way since those days, way back in 1995, I guess it was. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's take a look at really what's happened. There's been a huge evolution in just a couple of years, really, uh, and what you guys were doing in the early days of Real Audio and where we are right now. Let's take a look, if you, if you will, and sort of show us what the progress has, has been, Martin. Well, when we started out uh, in 1995, most people were still on 14.4 modems. Right. And really the best one could do at that time was a shortwave quality audio mm -hmm. voice. Music was really very difficult. Do you to have hear. an example of that? or uh, That's I too old. I don't actually have an example okay. of that, but I've got an example of the first stuff that we did on 28.8 modems, okay. um, which was in the, the latter part of 1995. Okay, so um, can we so to that? Yeah, we can hear some... Uh, after months of study, President Clinton has the essentially punted headline. the tobacco deal and to Congress. If you compare sort of short wavy to to yeah. kind of flat, like, like a bad AM Now, we can compare that with what we can do today. Um, okay, now this is the newest one, which is really Audio 5.0. 5.0, oh, that's right. Um, and 5.0 is still actually in beta. Um, uh -huh. The quality is significantly improved in terms of speech. You'll hear okay, the can we listen? Yes, indeed. After months of study, President Clinton has essentially so almost up to the, the FM band. Yeah. 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 Um, the indeed. Now, the what's the difference? What have you done? What's the magic that got you from 2.0 to 5.0 that gave you that quality? Um, it's really work on the on the improving the codecs. That's okay. the software yeah. that actually compresses and decompresses the sound. And people, um, ourselves, of course, and others, have learned a lot about which parts of the um, the, the audio mm -hmm. you can kind of throw away and still have it sound great when it gets to the yeah. other Now end. let's get to the hard test, and that's music. Words right. are kind of easy. What's happened with the music um, side? Well, this is some music um, at 28.8, which we, we can hear. Um, this is what you get over a 28.8 modem. And this is with 5.0. This is with 5.0. Um, and let's hear it for a second. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Um, but one of the music's always been hard yeah. because especially music combined sure. with speech. Um, so one of the, the, the really cool things that's happened recently is that 56K modems have come along. Right. So-called 56K Yeah, they don't really deliver 56K, right. but they certainly give us maybe another 50% 
uh, a band. And you can take to, advantage of that and get better quality we, music? Indeed we can. And, and here's the same piece of music uh, at the 56K uh, modem level. Yeah, we can hear the difference. Okay. That certainly stretches it out. Yeah. Um, and then if we if we look into um, the future, well, cable modems, the, right? I mean, it's and not bandwidth is not an issue. Right. I mean, here in Silicon Valley, people have got cable modems yeah. already. But so, I mean, then it's like listening to radio. Right. And in fact, if we can listen to the okay. same piece of music again, uh, and this is really CD quality. Do we got it coming? Yep, it's going to come. Here okay. Go. I didn't click right there. Yeah, you can hear the highs right away. All right, let me ask you, uh, what is the point in all of this? I know I mess around with audio just to right. see what can be done for the technology. How do typical people like to use audio on the web? To do what kinds of things? Well, I think that the, the first group who, of uh, people who used audio were radio stations. Mm -hmm. And there, there are probably a, nearly a thousand radio stations out there on the internet today who are broadcasting. Uh, they're doing live broadcasts. Could you give us some examples? I mean, let's just sort of show what you're talking well, about Well, one, one of the, uh, the best examples is actually to, uh, to go to the NPR website. Mm -hmm. uh, NPR have uh, their news headlines. Every hour they take the five-minute news right. uh, bulletin and they put it up on the, on the Internet. Okay. Now, this isn't live. It's just replaced every But in hour. fact, that's the point, because if I miss it at 5 o'clock, I can listen to the 5 o'clock news anytime because it's been archived Absolutely. on their website. So let's just see what this sounds like. Okay. This is uh, right now, the last, uh, we're just okay. coming up to the hour. So. From National Public Radio News in Washington, it's I'm like Corey Clinton. Right. And the point President is here, I mean, we didn't have time to do it, but you can listen United to radio States station in Australia or anywhere around the world. Uh, on the web, right. which changes the whole world right. of radio, thanks right. to things like Real Audio. Indeed. Thank you very much. Well, one of the reasons you might want to plug in is to do practical stuff on the web, like hold a virtual meeting. To do that, you need one of the coolest plugins around, Netopia from Farallon. Olivia Reese is a real estate consultant with a real office near San Francisco. She has a desk, a telephone, and a computer. But Olivia also has a virtual office accessible 24 hours a day that exist only in cyberspace. The Netopia Virtual Office is a collaborative worldwide website located in the owner's computer or through an internet service provider. I am more connected even though when I'm not in touch. Like suppose I'm out of the office, people can still interact with me through the virtual office because I'm on the road a lot. I look at properties, I show properties, I go to clients' home, and, and there are just so many things that I, I cannot do in my office, but at the same time, while I'm not in my office, things get done in my office. Olivia spends a lot of time away from her desk, visiting, showing, and examining properties. But to keep connected, she leaves her virtual office door open. Clients with the right password can enter and obtain documents left in their outbox, make changes, and send them back. When Olivia is at her desk and online, she gets a message if a visitor wants to connect. Clients can communicate with text-based chat or by voice. Sometimes it is not them having a hard time getting hold of me. I would have a hard time getting a hold of my clients. Suppose I have documents ready for them. I know and they know they can come into my office and take care of that business at their own time. Of course, visitors to the site need to download a plug-in to interact and use Netopia's features, but Olivia has planned for that. What I will do is through email, we talk about downloading that small piece of a, a visitor piece there, and they can download it and they can come visit me anytime or any other person who has a virtual office. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. When people first started socializing on the web, it was in chat rooms or forums where you just traded boring typewritten messages. Now you can freely roam about a virtual environment with your avatar thanks to websites like The Palace. And you do need a plugin, right, to play The Palace game and to be involved in that? Yeah, you do. I mean, and what you, is the plugin? Where do you get it? You get it at www.thepalace.com. So I can download it for free from your website. Yep, absolutely. Or you can buy it. I've seen it in boxes yep. and software stores. 
Uh, and what does it enable me to do? What am I getting out of the Palace plugin? Well, it allows you to go to a variety of sites on the internet that are immersive in multimedia and graphical and that use avatars. Uh, uh, like, like what? Let's take an example. What do we have up here now? Well, what you're looking at right now is, uh, is a Palace server that we run, and actually it's demonstrating uh, an event attendance capability. Uh -huh. So you can now go to these events, and uh, I'm going to bring this window to the foreground here. All right, so that's your avatar, Felix Hunger. This is me right here, And yeah. there's this lady named Haswell running this event right now in this that, room. That's right. And uh, so I'm going to submit a question to her. I'm going to ask her to invite me to stage. Okay, which means what? Well, seeing as how Haswell is now up on the stage, she can actually okay. invite me to come up with her. And then you have the opportunity to present or speak or say what you want to the group that might be in there? That's right. Now, Haswell is also pushing out real media to me, which you, uh, you're about to hear in a moment here. I just pushed the uh, play button. That music you're hearing might actually be her speaking instead okay. of Okay. So these are sounds in any event coming from this event room. And what's in the mind? She's actually pushing out a web page for you? Yep. Right now she's pushed out the uh, Yahoo web page. But these might be slides. If you're so it could be a slide presentation. Sure. So this could be a really serious application of a business meeting taking place in that Palace event room. Absolutely. All right. Let's go to another example. You have an Egghead software store, kind of virtual store in the Palace also. What does that look like? Um, let me get there. Hang on a moment. I'm going to go there explicitly. Okay, so you've got just a bunch of rooms you can sort of jump to. Yep, a lot of places on the internet you can go to. All right, now what's cool about this store is there are other shoppers in there, right? And you can sort of bump into people and meet them and talk about stuff as you would in the real store. Yeah, the thing that's probably the most interesting is that you can actually talk to uh, a representative from Egghead who uh, So there's really the like store. a sales clerk in there. Yep, back here is uh, Egghead, Egghead Lauren. Lauren. And uh, these are other customers floating around here. You can actually buy things online in here as well. Huh. So you can talk to other customers, talk to the clerk, buy stuff, et cetera. Yep, exactly. All right, another example I want you to show us, which is really cool, is kind of a virtual classroom, uh, which really is very much like attending a class in, in the real world way, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, this is the Ask Eric virtual classroom at uh, Syracuse uh -huh. University. Um, it's actually in use right now, and uh, it's used for two purposes, one for distance learning, and also to, uh, to have educators learn about mm -hmm. how to teach their students. Yeah. So uh, the room we're going in right now uses both Palace and multi-user shockwave technology. Um, and so this is sort of a virtual about. classroom and what the students might be on those little stools there. Yeah, absolutely. Teacher might be sitting up on the big stool. And, and we've got the, the sort of multimedia blackboard. Yeah, exactly. In fact, this is a multi-user shockwave movie. And uh, though this one's not very interesting, usually with the cl when the class is going on, the movie you're seeing up there mm -hmm. relates to the coursework material, et cetera. I can also take notes uh, about whatever it is that uh, the class is, is so about. So you can just type away at your keyboard making notes of what's going on in that class. Yeah, and it uh, actually appears here, and then I can save it off yeah. the disk. And people really use this, again, in a, in a classroom oh, situation? This is in use right now. All right, let, last, let's show a fun example, and that's you have something called South Park, I think it is, where people just sort of mess around and have fun. Yeah, this was put up by uh, Comedy Central. It's based uh -huh. on their uh, property, South Park, which is a cartoon series right. that's on right now. And as you can see, when I pop in here, it automatically turns me into one of the South Park characters. Right. Uh, this is a very popular server. There's 100 people on it at the moment. Wow. And uh, this is actually the, the warning, quote unquote, that pops up at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very heavily scripted environment. For example, uh, fans of the show will recognize Kenny, who yeah. gets killed in every episode. If I click on him <laughs> in any room that he appears right. in, he dies just like he does on the show. And uh, these are all other people popping around, and uh, a lot of people come in here, talk, goof around. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun environment. So just a social environment. And again, that's a piece of the palace, and you download the palace plugin from thepalace.com. That's right. Thank you. All right, that's our look at internet plugins. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. One line usually heard around any household is, anything good on TV tonight? Problem is it's hard to answer that question with the usual information resources available. You can scan the grid and TV guide. That'll give you a one or two word program description. Not much to go on. You can wade through pages of ads and complicated listings to try to find a good show, but it's all very inefficient. Now there is a way to use the power of your PC to turn you into a discriminating television viewer. And the way is this very inexpensive piece of software called ETV, short for Electronic TV Host. It costs all of about 10 bucks, but with it you can turn your computer into a huge searchable database of every single television program. Here's how it works. You download a weekly file from the TV Host database. The download's free. You don't even need internet access. TV Host runs their own free network. You get 10 days of listings customized to your city. 
The best part is what you can do with these listings. You can look at the basic grid view, but the listings are color-coded by type of program. You can click on a grid entry and see more detail. You can sort all the listings and look for just one station's schedule, sort all shows by title, or look for just certain kinds of programs. For example, I can say, just show me all movies or all sports programs. Best of all, I can search the listings by, for example, actor or actress. Any movies on this week starring Sharon Stone? Yep, three of them at five different times. Plus, I get descriptions of the movies, the cast, the rating, the length, etc. You can do keyword searches for any program, and you can even create custom viewing guides for separate members of the family. This is a terrific and practical little piece of software that's probably one of the best productivity tools around since you won't waste time zapping across the channels looking for something good and then settle in with a piece of TV junk. There is a monthly subscription fee which costs less than buying four issues of TV Guide. You can get details at their website, which is tvhost.com. That's it for this edition of the Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with the latest on computers and the Internet. And if you want to find out anything more about whatever you saw on our show today, check out our new and improved website at cnptv.com. That's it for this week. Hope we'll see you here again next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how to's for a Windows world because the world runs on Windows. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, Cyber Privacy. We'll show you how to surf the web anonymously with the Lucent Personal Web Assistant. You'll see what can happen to all that information websites gather about your personal behavior. We'll introduce you to PGP, a simple way to encrypt your email so that only the intended recipient can read it. And we'll tell you about the anonymizer that lets you host a website or join a news group or chat room in anonymity. We'll visit a private detective to see how he uses the internet to track down people for his clients. And finally, the Firefly Passport, a way to create a unique and personalized online identity while still preserving your privacy. Plus, my pick of the week, the ultimate sports simulation for golfers. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.